we've made it a little farther north and this time we stopped in Fort Monroe, Virginia. And today is the warmest day of the four <laughs> days that we've been here, so we're taking advantage of it. That's right. Now this is a pretty cool place. We actually haven't stayed exactly here before in Virginia, so we thought we'd shake it up. This is actually an old army base that closed down in 2011. But now it's a national monument. It's also loaded with history. It's the largest stone what fort built in the u.s yeah and the construction on it stacy just told me this so um <laughs> it was finished in 1834. right so we are going to go check out some of the old buildings there are a couple people that have been through this base including several presidents yeah abraham lincoln jefferson and davis was actually imprisoned here so we are going to go check out some of these old old buildings from the 1800s more history you know i love that <laughs> <laughs> of course, the best way to start is always the visitor center. What a perfect way to spend the day just dreaming. Way to spend the day just honey do baby boo sugar be love me. Way to spend the day just honey. This fort is the largest stone fort in the U.S. And in comparison, Fort Sumner is about two acres. This is 63 acres. So it is much larger than all the other little little baby forts we've been to, I should say. <laughs> yeah. And where we're walking now, we're on top of the uh, fort. And we're walking next to all the cannon placements. And there must have been a cannon every 12 to 15 feet that swung in a, I don't know, 180 degrees. 80 degree arc, all firing that way. So any of the ships that were a threat out here in the Chesapeake Bay, they felt the wrath of Fort Monroe, that's for sure. A cool fact about the Army base here is where we're standing actually became a pet cemetery for the Army. So if you walk through here, you can see little headstones from um, pets of the military that were stationed here. This place is definitely worth a stop. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, and, and it's interesting, the architecture. But the arches, you not only see the top of the arch, but what you don't see is the bottom of the arch. And that was key in holding up this fort. Which is sitting right on the coast on a high water table on sand. So the fact that the architects knew way back in the day how to construct this, this building that is still here is pretty crazy. It is, and, and walking through here, um, you could tell that back, back in the day, there weren't many tall fountains. <laughs> <laughs> because I think the highest point walking through the arches is 5'9". It is the highest arch. Yeah, so if you were tall, you had to get through that um, before you could stand up. But this is a must-see if you're in this area. And it feels great. All the stone, you know, even in the heat and humidity of Virginia in the summertime, it was nice and cool in here. Yeah, this is nice. I mean, it, it, it's... Pretty interesting architecture when you get in and start going behind the scenes and underground. Although Davis might not have thought it was so nice yeah. while he was imprisoned here. Although yeah. it was only a few days, so yeah. really it wasn't that bad. interesting fact about Battery Irwin is that it was constructed in 1901 and the guns were placed in 1903 at a cost of 12,500 bucks. That I'm sure was a lot of money back then. I'd be interested to know what that cost equivalent is today. This battery behind me is Battery Parrot and it was built just two years following Battery Irwin and this bad boy cost $211,000. So that is a steep price back in 1904.
Behind me, you'll see quarters number one, and this house is very significant. Thankfully, they're gonna restore this house, and eventually you'll be able to tour it. But this is the house President Lincoln stayed at when he was making plans to take back Norfolk from the Confederacy. One of the cool things about Fort Monroe are all these beautiful houses that were left behind from the army. So if you're looking for somewhere to live in Hampton Roads, there's 170 houses here on this old army base that they are renting out. I don't know if any are for sale, but I know they rent them out and some of them are beautiful. The best is yet to come. We are down here by the seawall and you can see our RV and the campground is right behind us. So one thing to know about this campground is it's not very large and it will fill up quickly in peak time during spring, summer and fall. Yeah, we're in a temporary spot, so meaning we only have water and in, in, uh, 50 amp, which is not bad. We're only here for a few days and the park does have a dump station, so we'll hit that on the way out. But you could tell from our rig to the seawall, we've got a pretty good view. And there's nothing like seeing the sunrise coming up right outside your window. It was phenomenal this morning. I just parked Phil in a Dollar General parking lot so I can walk down here to Walgreens to pick up his prescription. We've done this a few times along the way. The more we RV, the, the less afraid we are to just, you know, find a parking spot, walk over and uh, pick up whatever we need. All right, we are all set. I have Phil's script and I just have to walk about two blocks down to where the rig is and we are back on the freeway. After our quick jaunt into Walgreens, we figured, hey, why not make another detour? So we found a renovated or under renovation Burger King. They have a parking lot right next to the Chick-fil-A. So we pulled in there real fast. Um, and I thought I could go all the way around and come back out. Um, not so much. <laughs> so we're going to see how well Ruby really turns in this parking lot. See if I can turn, do a 180 and go back out the same way we came in. I think I can. Without taking off the toad. So, yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, let's see if we can do this. Of course, if it was up to me, we would not have turned in here because I didn't want to have to take off the toad, but Phil is definitely willing to risk the biscuit. Although it looks like you have a ton of room now. That can be like oh no, you're gonna hit the curb! Okay, you just missed it by about six inches. He missed that curb by like six inches. I just knew that front tire was going to go over it. Whoop, whoop. Ruby is one sweet machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chick-fil-A check, Walgreens check. So it's $69 for the regular wash of the rig because it's over 30 feet. If you're less than 30, then it's $49. We're getting the works, so that's undercarriage, wax, roof, attendant brushing if need be, that's $84. The Jeep will be an additional 20 bucks. Not bad for a one-stop shop. Typically, when we go to a harvest host, we're normally showing you breweries and wineries. But did you know, oh, that's only 50% of harvest hosts. The rest of the harvest hosts are places like this, this mega car wash. There's also farms and museums and all kinds of places that no alcohol is involved. So when you're thinking about joining Harvest Hosts, just know there are a lot of options out there for you. So this mega wash can host three Harvest Hosters. And this is why we really love Harvest Hosts. As a matter of fact, if you wanna see our top five Harvest Hosts that had nothing to do with alcohol, I'll put the link down below. That's what I call one stop shopping. Yeah, there she is, all clean and wet. Um, however, they said that the water will beat up and dry and it should be spot free. More to follow on that one. Because <laughs> uh, everybody knows, uh, or should know, I don't like spots on my rig, so. This is true. I hope I don't have to get up there and wipe it all off. But um, it was a pretty good uh, setup. You know, I didn't have to take the Jeep off. They did pre-soak it. Um, and then they scrubbed the windshield to get the bugs and stuff off. So pretty easy. I, and 
I would say we were only in there about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and there wasn't a line here like there normally is when we go to the Blue Beacon. Normally we are sitting from 30 minutes to up to an hour waiting yeah. behind trucks. So